Good evening and welcome to the August meeting of the Pen Penfield Historic <laughs> Preservation Board. Um, I'm Tom Combs, the chairman of, of the board. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, first, uh, first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from, from last month. Uh, has everyone had a chance to look them over and any, uh, could we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. second. Any comments, corrections, additions? Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the uh, minutes are, are approved. And the, the next item is uh, certificates of appropriateness and we have a guest tonight, Justin Zagorski, who's going to just talk briefly about uh, updates to the sign at 2136 Five Mile Line Road. Thank you. Welcome, Justin. Oh, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, my name is Justin Zagorski, I'm the marketing manager for ECC Technologies. Um, as you can see from uh, the display up here, our sign's a little dated and worn, so we're looking to improve that. Uh, this is from Vital Signs, a reputable company here in Rochester, and they'll come out and they'll do the full install and all of that. In addition to that, there's a small placard to put on the back of the building. Uh, that is typically where people enter and they buzz in. Um, we often get people going to the retirement facility in the back who come to our door, and we just want to put a little sign out there to let them know go the other way, <laughs> that kind of thing. So the, the sign looks to me to be basically identical to what's there now. 100%. Just, just spruced up. Yep. Is it exactly the same size? Yep, same size, same location, same everything. And the, the, uh, the little sign in the back is just a tiny thing. It looked like it was an inch by a couple inches or something. Yeah, it's gonna be, um, I think the exact measurements well, maybe are maybe a little bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah it looks like, like it's six inches by 12 inches is yep. what you have here. Yep, and then it's gonna be a small, it's actually acrylic, and then the logo will be embedded on that so it'll be see-through, so you can actually still see the brick and all that behind it, so. Okay. Any uh, questions from the board? No. Okay. Do we have a motion? I move to approve. And a second? I'll second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Justin, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. I'll reach out to you by email tomorrow and we'll wrap everything up. Beautiful. Great. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay, we have uh, uh, two informational items tonight. Uh, the first being the bicentennial participation, just uh, any updates that we have in, in preparation for the October um, the presentation. Yeah, we can we can skip over that just because uh, we're on a little bit of a timeline uh, here, so we can jump right over and do the Clark House first and come back to the sure. bicentennial stuff, if that's sure. okay with everybody. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and. Uh, Shannon, would you wanna kick this off with a little intro on the topic? Sure, uh, yeah, so as we've discussed previously, um, the Clark House Rehabilitation Project is something that we're gonna be discussing um, probably at every meeting for a little while now. Um, we're gonna be working with the town board to figure out the best way to go about it, um, what the best outcome is for the town and for the residents and as, a, as boards. Um, so as uh, we kind of talked about before, Bergman did um, an analysis of the condition of the Clark House, and they also presented some options, um, some proposals of what, let me just scroll down to that, of uh, the different portions of the building, the structural assessment, and uh, rehabilitation, demolition, rebuilding options. Um, so tonight we have uh, Town Supervisor Marie Sinti joined us. Um, she's gonna be gathering some feedback to take back to the town board discussion. 
the town board is going to be discussing the Clark House at their next work, work session on August 10th, which is next Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I think probably the best way to start a discussion is to talk about the tour that we did uh, on Monday. Um, if anybody has any <coughs> thoughts that they would like to share and then kind of go into the discussion from there. Um, okay. I can start. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so I've been through this building twice, uh, first time several years ago, Tom was there uh, at the same time, uh, and uh, on Monday. Um, actually, I think the, the building is uh, not in worse condition now than it was several years ago. Several years ago, it was very, uh, very wet and moldy, uh, now it seems that it dried out. Uh, it doesn't mean that it got uh, in any better structural shape, but um, I, I, I think that uh, the way town kept it is uh, is actually not bad. You know, it's different to what uh, Don was uh, talking about uh, during the, his uh, our tour, but Don wasn't there several years ago. So. Um, so you're saying it has not deteriorated. It, it, in my mind, it has not deteriorated much farther than it was uh, three or four years ago, whenever we walked it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not, obviously, uh, examine uh, the uh, exterior or deterioration of foundation and framing. I'm just saying about the, the feel of uh, interior. Uh, it still uh, feels a uh, little moldy, though. But uh, the impression that I got is that the newer two portions of the building are, are not consequential in, uh, in uh, their contribution uh, to the historical uh, to the historical value of the building. Uh, I think the 1832 portion is the most important, and um, Excuse me, I need your mic back. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 1832 portion is uh, much more uh, important in that case, uh, and considering the uh, the cost of uh, rehabilitation, can you please scroll down uh, to the cost comparison? So this one is the rehabilitation of the building as it exists, um, which is 2.2 million. Mm -hmm. um, this one is demolishing um, the entire building um, and then rebuilding mm -hmm. portions of it, um, 1.5, 1.6 million. And then this one is the demolish and replace the entire building, 2.9 million. Okay. Uh, so there are several issues <clears throat> at hand here. Um, depending on who the user of the building will be, uh, and we can think of leaving, demolishing um, the 83 part of the building only, or 83 and, and 1937 part of the building. Uh, if the building is too large and the use of the building will be for some kind of assembly, uh, they will have to add an elevator uh, to the building and that the con construction cost will, uh, will be even more expensive. If the building is smaller, uh, it can be probably used for some kind of an office or so on, then no additional uh, accessibility uh, means would have to be provided for the building. Uh, so that will be the least expensive uh, option uh, for the building. Um, I mean, uh, again, uh, I, I don't see anything valuable in 1983 part of the building. Uh, 1937 is questionable. 1832 is important. That's my opinion. I have a question. Was there, um, did they look at just 
um, demolishing the additions and then rebuilding or rehabbing the 1832? I don't portion. think that was one of the um, ones that was in. <coughs> it, wasn't oh. it uh, one of the second options? Yeah, it looks like demolishing that newest portion and then rebuilding the two front portions, but there wasn't an analysis of just the, the 1832 portion. Um, this it wasn't an extensive, um, you know, complete analysis. This was just a few of the options that they presented, but I'm sure that they could do more in the future. And I agree with, with Mira that, you know, the 1832 building itself is, has significance and, um, you know, I'd like to see that remain. And that's just my opinion. Um, and, you know, rehab for some use, hopefully that the town um, could find useful um, in some way, so. Chuck? You didn't print that email out, did I sent you, did you? No, I didn't. Uh, I guess I agree with Steve. <clears throat> The, the 1832 part, I think, is worth saving. The other two additions, uh, I would demo them. And I would, cons I would move forward by uh, trying to reach out for an RFP to try to find a historic consultant that may be able to give the town some advice. Um, there is quite a few different chance opportunities for grant money. Whether they would work or not, I don't know, but a, a restoration consultant could uh, help the town to identify w some kind of grants and and um, work on writing the grants for them. I think that once you got rid of those two additions, you're left with the, 19, the 1832 section. You're gonna see your rehab costs go down because um, you don't have as, as big an area to work on. A couple of things that we should be done, I think, right away is we need to get some air circulation on into that building. Um, so I would urge the town to get a couple of dehumidifiers and some fans to move the air around. Um, the town had indicated that there was some uh, water problems in the basement, and obviously we haven't had any rain for quite a while, so it was, it was dry when we were there. Um, but a solution would, would be to put a foundation drain system, perimeter drain around the outside. And if you just had that footprint of the 1832 building, it wouldn't be as extensive. And reviewing the, the town's, their Bergman survey, they were mentioned some issues with the framing and the um, joists in the basement. I poked around pretty good in the basement and it looks to me to be in pretty good shape. Um, the only issue may be that the, the floor joists are maybe undersized based on what your future use would be. Um, but I think a consultant could help with identifying a, a, pre, a future tenant, which would be a good, good uh, first move for us also so that we could partner with somebody, whether it would be a business or a nonprofit. Um, having a purpose for the building, I think, would help to define the scope before you just would start going at it. But yeah, I would definitely get some air moving in there and take a look at doing the the basement drainage if, in fact, that is an issue. Um, right. The only grants that I know of are historic tax credits. If this, if we were to designate this building uh, for history, uh, for uh, put it on a federal uh, register. Yeah, there was, there was a list of ones. I reached out to a couple of our developers today and, and uh, sent an email to Tom, but unfortunately I didn't print it. So, so um, I'm working on chasing down some contacts on that. And whether they'll work, I don't know, but it's worth it's yeah, worth. It was uh, my understanding that town as municipality doesn't qualify for that. Uh, so I don't know. I, I would like to learn uh, if there are any other grants that town could uh, qualify for. Yeah, I think the other issue is that the building is just locally designated. It's not on the national or the state register, right, meaning that it wouldn't apply for most of those tax incentives, regardless of if the town is qualified or not. Right, but you you can get it designated. Correct, right. Uh, yeah, I don't think we'd be looking for tax credits. I think you're just looking for cash for, you know, maintaining the store. Um, keeping the building. Yeah, I think the, so. it, it, we might run into problems because it's just locally designated though, so it might not be recognized the same way. But I, 
absolutely we should look into it, of course. Uh, is, is it true that town never uh, reached out to a historic consultant on this building? It can't be. Must have talked to someone. I don't know the answer because I've only been here since no, January 1st. No, I'm talking to Linda. She would not. I, I thought Bergman had. Berg Bergman is not a historic consultant. No, no. I thought oh, they, they reached out. I oh. thought. There wasn't any mention of that in their report that I saw. Mm -hmm. No, there was no mention. Uh, but that's but a very good uh, thought that you, you yeah. have to talk to a historic consultant. Oh, yeah. You can just try. I don't know if you have to bid it or and do an RFP, or you can just yeah. uh, contact Bureau, right. and they can, uh, you know, yeah. they've done. Well, you, you got to understand, what, what was done is it's... Um, it did cost to have them do what they did, but a lot of it was just about how you could um, get to mm -hmm. stay relevant because there were so many issues in the basement and the roof and all that. Mm -hmm. They weren't looking about grants. They weren't looking about, I wish they had had um, pricing for the 1832 versus the rest. But you know, when that started, we had a business that was interested in going in mm -hmm. and had said business go in, you needed that middle area. You needed the um, 1937 right. because that's where the kitchen and all that is. Right. So, you know, if, if that had been um, taken off the table, that wouldn't have uh, served the purpose that we were looking. You, you talk about a focus, you know, we well, were looking there are, at. There are companies in Rochester that would, I would answer an RFP that are pretty good at putting these historic projects together and um, helping, find, helping market it to find some tenants. Well, I think it's probably after we come to terms with this, it'll be time to do that again, you know. For a long time, I mean, Jim Costello, that was his, he was going trying to contact all sorts of people trying to get somebody to go in there and we didn't get didn't get a lot of interest and but the one that the, was interested needed the kitchen space and all that and uh, I think that's I mean I can't say for sure but I think that's why we didn't talk about like taking it just for the house because the house the house is yeah it could be an office or something but um, like you said about upstairs, you couldn't go up there unless, you know. Why can't you go upstairs? Well, I no, went up there when I was there. Oh, come on, it's, it's, you need an elevator if you're gonna have some kind of um, space. Well, if you have a larger business. space, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, well, you do. A lot of people like the charm of an older building like that, and I, I would say you, you don't know until you try it. Right, but so. this is the, right now the town owns it. If somebody else bought it, that'd be a different story. The town has, certain considerations as a municipality you can't uh, yeah. so I'm feeling a little bit like um, mm. coming late to the party <laughs> um, but um, I think there my goal to being here tonight is really first of all um, well and uh, is to get answer any questions you might have for me uh, or the town or get the answers if I don't know the answers to the questions that you're asking me um, and then also to provide some initial feedback to the town board when we take this up at a work session. Uh, to be quite candid, the town board, this town board, 2022, has only seen a presentation by Bergman but has not had any discussion about it as a town board. So it, this is a bit of a chicken and egg thing. I, I think this is the first of several visits possibly to this board. Um, to let you know where the discussions are heading, where the interest is, and gauge what your perspective is. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think, uh, and, uh, I, I don't necessarily want to speak for everyone, but I think we, we're sending a message that we, we think there's tremendous value to the town of the 1832 section. Um, now, whether, whether that can be saved or done in replica, I guess it's, it's for discussion, but I think our first choice would be to, to save the, the old structure if we could. Um, but sort of playing off of what Linda was saying, that um, without knowing what you're going to do with the property, whatever structure you have there, uh, after it's fixed or, or, or rebuilt, um, if you don't know that in advance and you don't really know what to, what to do to get there. Um, so whether that means that you leave the 1939 section or you, you I, I don't know, without knowing where, you, where you're headed. Well, I think the town board has to make that its first question. 
answer that and then figure out how to get there, right? Uh, what would Bull be involved in selling it? Um, I think it's a possibility. There are some concerns about the lot lines and things like that. It's not clean. Um, I don't want to speculate more than that. So how about if I find out some information for you? What's involved? It may open up some more possibilities. Um, my own feeling is that, you know, we the town does not have enough event space, doesn't have enough lodges. Um, meeting, you know, like a Dolomite Lodge we have, we have Harris Whalen, they're packed. They're packed all the time. They're full. Uh, here's my idea as an architect. Uh, task one would be to demolish uh, two newer sections. Task two, uh, task two would be to find the business that goes in. If that business needs additional space, they can add, put an addition to suit their space next to the older section. Mm -hmm. And that will still be less expensive than trying to rehab and uh, uh, adapt the uh, 1939 section to that business. Mm -hmm. And it may be more, actually, businesses may like that idea better. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What yeah. Do you, a new kitchen, <laughs> right? It's yeah. Brand new, yeah. What do you think about the town saving it for use by the town? If town wants to uh, invest money and save the uh, middle section, yeah, that's fine too. Okay. Or if you find a use for it. Okay. M my understanding was that the town didn't have any use for it. Uh, Debbie was there and she just, mm. she couldn't, yeah, she said, oh, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> well, what, what the supervisor is saying is, is something that's very important to the town is finding other locations for people to meet. And, you know, those lodges, if it's done right, this could be a potential um, place. Yeah. But, yeah, you need a new kitchen or, yeah. or big yeah, and time the problem with that I think you'd find it would be considerably cheaper to build something than to renovate the Clark House yeah. into a town lodge to rent to the public. But... It's my thought. I yeah. just don't want to speak without. Don't know. I don't want to speak for the town board without this town board having a conversation. Yeah. Right. There's, there's opportunities uh, all yeah. over. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to feel out where this board might be with certain situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did this uh, uh, Did this report have any? vertical dimensions of the building on their building sections? Um, I don't believe so. No. No, I so. Because my impression of the middle part was that it was, uh, had pretty low ceilings. Uh, so, you know, thinking about the lodge and things like that, that may be not very conducive to mm. such use. Uh, and then you would have to think, uh, you know, if you, be, if you develop it into an assembly space, you have to think about second floor and accessibility. You can probably put offices on the second floor mm -hmm. um, and yeah, avoid accessibility for that. Mm -hmm. And restrooms and storage space. And Not restrooms. Downstairs. Restrooms have to be accessible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, storage space, you have to have structure that can support it. And yeah, for storage space, you need like more than double uh, uh, support than for regular space. What would the feeling be if, you know, just saving that first piece, that 1832 piece, but then taking down the newer two sections as you talked about, but building an assembly space off of that? Yeah, you're like yeah, that. that's that would be my yeah. proposal. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think what bothers me about a business is, you know, we could put all this money into it and then have a business come in and then they make money, but the town just spent all that money. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, if you, and if you built a, a space like you're talking about off the back, do you want to have a commercial business in the house? It's basically connected. Yeah, you can have a great lodge 
and maybe older part could be historical room or an office or uh, actually would love to move the local history room yeah. in there mm -hmm. I just think that would be really cool oh, that that's be, just me speaking that personally. would be great mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I don't again haven't had a conversation mm -hmm. with the board no. yeah no I like that too good idea and the local history room, as you probably know, is crammed, chock full. Right. Could use some space. Well aware of the uh, situation well, with with the space in the room. Yeah, uh, her concern was that uh, she did, she wouldn't want to be alone in that mm -hmm. space. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That for you know for right. safety security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else I can uh, research and get back to this board about for next month or the month after? I would like to move forward with discussions with the town board in a, a, a pretty speedy manner, I guess, you know? Yeah. Well, you, you've heard our, our, <laughs> our, first, our first option, and we, we really don't have a say, I guess, in the, in the newer portion. But as far as the um, sure, yeah, uh, fifty the, years makes it historic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe I speak out of place, and maybe I'm not allowed to do it. But I can offer just my time if you want me to uh, be a guest at your town board meeting. If you have any, you know, architectural questions or something, yeah, I'll be happy uh, to help you. I appreciate that. But I don't know. Am I allowed to do that? Sure. Okay. Sure. It's okay with me. All it's right. a good use of your time and talent, right? Yeah. Um, I do want to thank this board, though, for taking the time to go visit the Clark House again. Um, I know some of you have done it twice. Some have been in just once. Um, but it's really helpful to mm -hmm. have your opinions and your eyes on the building. Well, if there's anything more that you want from us, questions, or you know, please feel free to come back to us. Definitely. Um, so I anticipate coming into the September meeting, if it's okay with you, because we'll have had an initial discussion. And so I'll give you an update. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marie. Thanks. Enjoy dinner. Great. And I'll send everybody the link and a reminder to watch the work session so that everybody's up to date on what the town board went over, too, so that when we come back in September, we're all up to date and we can just kind of get right into it. Okay. And what, what date is that? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Mm -hmm. so maybe send us a reminder? Yeah. yeah. I, think I, I think that's probably the best way to do it. I'll make a little note for myself. Yeah. And that's a work session. That's not yes. something we could come and, no. and watch. No. I could just watch. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to item 6.1, the bicentennial participation. Great. As we, I guess, mentioned a couple of times, the clock is ticking um, oh. rapidly. Um, any updates, Shannon? Yeah, um, so we are two months out from, uh, from our date for the event. I secured a second speaker. Um, it's been a little bit of a struggle finding people. Everyone seems to be busy that weekend. Um, but I'm working on trying to get a third. If not, we do have two people that are secured, so not too bad. And maybe we'll just have them talk a little bit longer, do slightly longer presentations if we're unable to find a third person. So who are the two? Um, Caitlin Meaves uh, from the Landmark Society. Either her or her coworker Megan is going to be um, doing a presentation. I have a meeting with them on Monday to talk about all the specifics of that. Um, and then one of our speakers from last time that you guys did the event, Bruce Zaretsky, uh, he's going to do a presentation on historic landscaping. And the, the, the people from Landmark, what, what is their, um, their topic? I'm not sure yet. Um, we're going to talk about that in... Um, in the meeting that we're gonna have on Monday. Um, does anybody have, I'm sure that they could do a, a wide range of topics. Um, does anyone have anything specific that we think they need to hit on? I, I mean, probably just the importance of historic preservation in general, anything more specific than that do we need to kind of direct them towards? 
Um, the, the last time we had uh, a discussion about the windows, right? Right, yeah, that was, um, I was hoping to get Steve Jordan, who is the expert in Rochester on historic windows, but he's busy that day. Um, it's something that we could have them kind of touch on, but maybe not do too much detail in. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that they're, the, just as you mentioned, that the um, just the importance of preservation okay. would be their strong suit. Yeah, I think that they'd feel very comfortable talking about that and emphasizing those points for sure. I will be, it would be nice to have a third, I think, to Yeah, I'm definitely, a, I'm on the lookout. Um, I have a couple of people I'm going to reach out to who I think um, would be good to speak. Um, hopefully they're available. Mm -hmm. Is Cynthia Hauk uh, available? I know she retired from the Landmark I'm gonna, Society. But... I'm going to get her contact information yeah. when I have my meeting with them on Monday and kind of feel out if that's something that she'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. I don't see why not. I know she had, you know, she's a relative of Calvin Owen and uh, descendant, and uh, you know she spoke before here, and she's really interesting and you know yeah. a passion for history. Yeah, I'll definitely ask them during my meeting with them see if they are okay with passing on her contact information okay. and, and inviting her. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she would be great. She's a she's a wonderful resource of information. Yeah, Kathy might have them have it too. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, I'll reach out to Kathy as well. I'll get a hold of Joan Belgiorno too. She she knows a lot of people. Right. She might she might have a couple yeah. of contacts. That's a good idea. So I'll work on that. Um, this is the poster that I created. Oh, that's um, nice. Little updated poster with all the information. Um, I did. I printed them out. I can hand them to you guys afterwards. Um, just giving all the information, updated date, um, location, RSVP information, things like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm also in the process of finishing the architectural bingo and ironing out all the details. Um, aside from that, I reserved the auditorium space, so we're all set for that. I'm working with PCTV, mm -hmm. um, Christinia on all the communications, getting the word out, things like that. Um, so just kind of nailing down all the final details and making sure that people know that the event is happening. Um, wanted to check with you guys, um, sending out the postcards. Um, it, what timeline do we think is good for that? Is a month too far in advance? Mm -mm. Or is it like a month timeline good to send those out, you think, before the event? Well, I, I actually made a note about that. I think for, for save the date announcements, I don't think two months is too far in advance. Okay. Um, what, what do others think? I, even have it. Definitely. Yeah, I think people's schedules fill up pretty quickly these days. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to try and get it. You do an early and then you do a reminder. Okay. It's closer. Yeah, I didn't want to do it too far in advance and have people forget, and I didn't want to do it too close so that yeah. people would be booked up for the weekend already. So, yeah. so we have the the list of homeowners that yes. we want to send it to. That's that's yep. set. Yeah, that's all set, ready to go. So I just have to do a quick markup of a postcard and get them printed. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of you, you said you you've got this this room reserved. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh, resources do we need for setup? Do we should we set aside time for us the day before or the morning of? Or? So the event is from 11 to 3. I asked that they open the doors, or no, sorry, the event is from 1 to 3. I asked that they open the doors for us at 11. So I think that's plenty of time to set up, more than enough, I assume. Um, so PCTV is hopefully going to be helping us get the microphone set up. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking we'd use um, this screen in case uh, we sure. need it for presentation purposes. Um, and then we'll probably just kind of have some booths with information packets, the games, the architectural bingo, things like that. Um, so I don't think it's going to be too much set up, but I think if everyone can get here maybe an hour ahead of time, that should be plenty. Mm -hmm. So tables are around the building someplace? If, yeah, I if think needed. so. I'm um, pretty sure that um, they're, <laughs> they ought to be somewhere in here. I've seen them in here before. <laughs> and then we have these tables, which yes. we'll, we'll move around and, and everything. But um, yeah, I'll figure out those details as it gets a little bit closer. Okay. Um, and then we also talked about the, the Jeff Crane Award, um, but we kind of didn't do any specifics on that? Is that something that we are definitely doing? Are we giving, a, you know, awarding that to somebody during 
the appreciation day or too close to call at this point? Well, I, I don't think it's too close to call because, you know, we oftentimes will have something that is sort of evident that, that mm -hmm. we all recognize, mm -hmm. um, you know, should be recognized. But um, I don't, nothing really comes to mind for this nothing year. Nothing happened this year. Yeah. Yeah, no, no big projects this year. I think the only one would be um, rising storm going into the Daisy Flower Mill, but they haven't started well, yet. Well, they haven't shown up yet. So. Yeah, they haven't gotten that project started yet. Um, their application is at the into the building department, so they're going to be starting soon, yeah. but they definitely won't be done by the time that we're having this. So, yeah. Well, then we'll next year. think of them for, for next year. Okay. All right. So we won't give, we won't do the award this year. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's uh, all my updates on that, unless anybody has any questions for me. I, I didn't have anything else written down here. Um, are there any other topics we need to, to take up tonight? Any further discussion of anything? I just have one thing. Um, I reached out to Jim Crackman about name plaques for yes. us. Uh, so he said, that's totally fine. We're all good to go. I just have to give him a list of names. So I just had one question. Um, a lot of people have nicknames. So I felt like we should be consistent. Are we doing nicknames? Are we doing full formal names? Whatever we do, I think it should just be consistent. Do we have a preference on that? Um, my preference is, is Tom versus Thomas, if that's the question. Yeah, I guess I'm asking you two. You're the ones with nicknames. <laughs> Uh, what I, I'm always in following you. What are the plaques? Is that what? so? Plaque. Tom actually has Sorry. one in front of you, no, him right now. It's not just his, but um, plaques. they're plaques oh, that have that like will that. have everybody's names on them, so that they sit in front of you during the meeting, so that everybody knows who you are, what, who's watching, our many fans. No, uh, which meeting are you talking about? Are you talking about our meetings or the? Uh, October. Oh, sorry, separate. Just our, our monthly meetings. Oh, monthly meetings. Yeah. Okay. I was still in there. Sorry, I should have made that separation. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any preference on nicknames versus full names? Steve, you're, you're like a Tom and Thomas. You've got a... I'm Steve and Belts. I always say Steve, so... Okay. All right. We have a lot of nicknames, so are we just going with nicknames? Chuck and Charles? You're... Yeah, I don't really have a preference. Chuck, okay. I guess, but... I think the other boards have a mix, so I don't yeah. think it's overly specific on what it needs to be. I just figured I'd ask. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I will submit those tomorrow, and hopefully we'll have them soon. All right. If there's uh, no further discussion, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move. So moved. And a second? I'll second. Okay. I don't think we need to vote on a motion to adjourn. No, I think we're all set. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, Linda. Yeah. Oh.